Hello, my name is Michael Johnson. I'm the lead technician for the Trent Simulation Centre at Nottingham. Today, I'm going to talk through the technical aspects and the processes we went through to deliver a remote simulation from a technical viewpoint. The simulation was undertaken in conjunction with the University of Nottingham and involved physiotherapy students assessing an acutely ill patient. For more information on the learning aspects of the simulation, please see the paper shown on screen presented by Laura Evans, one of our practice educators. Because of COVID-19, we were unable to deliver standard face-to-face -face teaching, and in light of this, we were therefore asked if we could deliver a simulation remotely. In order for remote participants to interact with the simulation, we started by defining a criteria we would need to meet. This criteria included presenting both video and audio feeds of the simulation room, as well as giving our participants access to the patient monitor and other details, such as the name and age of the patient. We also identified that the faculty within the simulation room would obviously need to be able to hear the candidate instructions during the simulation. Fortunately at this point, our trust had started to roll out MS teams for staff who were working remotely and for meetings within the hospital. We therefore thought this would be the most obvious platform for delivery of the remote sim. Our next task was really to identify how we would achieve this and present what we normally do in our simulation centre but to now present this over teams. So in order to run Teams, we first needed a PC within the control room. And luckily, we did have a spare PC that we were able to utilise for this. So our first task was to figure out how we would get our current AV feeds into the computer, so we could ultimately share those feeds via Teams. The simulation room here at the Trent Simulation Centre uses analogue video cameras and fixed ceiling microphones, as well as lapel microphones for close miking of candidates. These all feed into separate video and audio mixing desks both of which have numerous inputs and outputs we could utilise. In order to access our AV feeds, we used a device called the Intensity Shuttle by Blackmagic. The device pictured allows the user to connect various different video and audio sources and converts these to a digital signal, which is then connected to a PC via USB 3. The device also has a signal throughput, meaning we could put the device in line with our current AV setup. Now we also needed a solution for presenting the patient observations on screen. Unfortunately, the shuttle device wouldn't help as it will only process one video source at a time. So our solution was to use our portable SMOTS device as a second input to attach the monitor feed via HDMI. And then we can access this feed later on. So now this just left the audio. And in order to access all the audio feeds, we simply used a spare auxiliary from the mixing desk and connected this to the Blackmagic shuttle. Using the auxiliary out from the desk has the added bonus of allowing us to control the level of each input being sent to the shuttle, and therefore ultimately to create an overall audio mix of the simulation. Now we have the AV feeds going into the PC, we needed a software solution that would enable us to present the feeds as a separate screen ready to share via Teams. Here we used a program called OBS, or Open Broadcast Software. OBS Studio is a free and open source software suite for recording and live streaming. It is capable of real-time source and device capture, scene composition, encoding, recording and broadcasting. The software is free, works on both Windows and Apple and is a really fully comprehensive piece of software and I could easily fill an hour or two just going through its features. And if anyone has viewed our previous live streams of ASPI conferences, OBS was used for all of those. The main user interface is organised into five sections, scenes, sources, audio mixer, transitions and controls. Scenes are groups of sources like live or recorded video, text, pictures, pre-recorded audio and the mixer panel lets the user mute the audio and adjust the volume through virtual faders as needed. You can also see that there are two windows, the left one for modifying and previewing of non-active scenes whilst the right window is a program screen. You can now see there are two preview windows, the left one for modifying and previewing of non-active scenes, whilst the right one is a program screen showing exactly what's being transmitted. In the middle, there is a transition button allowing the transition of the two. Now OBS allows you to select and arrange multiple live video and audio sources. Here, we simply selected the intensity shuttle as a source for video and audio. In order to access the SMOTS feed for the patient monitor, we installed the SMOTS software onto the control PC and then selected the SMOTS feed as another video source within OBS. So we were now at a point where we have the simulation room video and audio going into the PC via the intensity shuttle and the patient observation screen via SMOTS. Using the source and scene sections, we were able to create custom graphics and add images as we saw fit. 
Here you can see the backdrop scene. This is made up of different images and utilizing these functions allowed us to create a look that suited our original goals, whilst also giving us full control on what and when the candidates can see certain things. Now we have everything we need to present a professional looking live stream. And in order to complete our task, OBS allows the user to open the program window as a separate window. This then gave us the option to select that whilst using the share screen function in MS Teams. The last task to complete was provide an audio feed of the candidate chat via MS Teams. We simply did this by connecting a speaker to the audio out from the PC and place the speaker within the simulation room. Now the faculty within the sim room all wear lapel microphones which helps to reduce feedback. Now on screen is the overall image the candidate saw whilst the scene was taking place. In conclusion, the delivery of remote simulation was successful, with a live audio video stream allowing participants to view the simulation suite, mannequin and vital signs. Faculty within the simulation room were able to listen and interact with the remote candidates as well. Following the simulation, the faculty also led a debrief via MS Teams as you would any standard meeting. Throughout the whole process, I think one main issue we had was that of the control PC's processing power. Ultimately, we were asking the computer to process multiple video feeds and graphical overlays, run smots in the background in order to access the patient monitor, and to run Teams while sharing a program screen from OBS. Unfortunately, our PC did not have a dedicated graphics card, and when everything is running, the system did struggle to run smoothly. However, since undertaking this sim, we have since created additional images and information to present via OBS. These include pictures such as giving the temperature, AB results, or the state of the mannequin's eyes, which could be difficult to see from these camera feeds within the sim room. We've also looked into using a GoPro as a body camera in order to give a higher level of immersion for the candidates. However, given the lack of processing power of the PC, we haven't been able to fully implement this yet. Thank you for listening and taking the time to watch this presentation. I'll be more than happy to take questions at the end of this session. Thank you.